Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome this morning to uh, Richmond Barracks. Um, we're launching the redevelopment of the lands at Emmet Road here this morning, and um, as I said, we'd like to welcome um, public representatives, um, the residents, some of the all members of the Regeneration Board, um, ministers, um, and Lord Mayor. The running order this morning will be. Um, Lord Mayor of Dublin, Niall Ring, will, will speak first, followed by the Minister for our Housing Planning and Local Government, Don Murphy. Brendan Kenny, on behalf of Dublin City Council, will say a few words, and we will finish with Andrew McDowell, Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Um, so, we move ahead, and I'll ask uh, Lord Mayor of Dublin, Niall Ring, to say a few words. Um, the last time there was a member of the Ring family here was actually, there was five of them, my grandfather's former brothers were here after the 1916 rising and they were in this building before they were sent off to Frontenac. So it's, it's very poignant of me to be here and see what has happened to this barracks since those days and uh, obviously uh, Kyo Square was built and then St Michael's estate and some, some issues arose there and now we have a wonderful opportunity and I'm 100% behind it as Lord Mayor of Dublin, a wonderful opportunity for the regeneration of this whole Inchy Core, Kilmainham area. Um, Inchy Core by the Camac. Um, I have other connections with Inchy Core. My father worked in Inchy Core Works for 40 years. I remember being in the, um, in the, in the works, getting my communion suit made by the probably on a book she or some, some deal with the, the tailor that they had up there. But when you see the area today and you see the potential that it has, it's really exciting. And this, this particular um, game changer, I would call it, um, this initiative, and um, what we're going to have here are social uh, housing and cost rental housing, 472 units including senior citizens units and I think it's important that senior citizen units are part of any of these developments because it gives people an opportunity to downsize and I know in my own area and within the whole city there's an awful lot of people who would love to come to high quality sheltered senior citizen units and move out of their two, three, maybe four bedroom houses which would increase the supply for younger families coming up. But just looking what the, the, the proposals they're doing here, 472 homes, obviously integrating that with the wider fabulous Inchico village. Um, there's going to be a library, public park, public plaza, community fa facilities, all the bells and whistles to make this a template for the future of housing and the great thing about it is Dublin City Council will be the owners and will control it. So I'm just going to finish now, but anyone who read Joseph O'Brien's wonderful history book on Inchy Core, and he did, he did fabulous work on it, hopefully he'll need a new chapter on it, and the new chapter will be on this magnificent redevelopment and a whole new game changer for the people and the community of, of Inchy Core. And of course, 
I'm only new to the job, so I forgot to mention everybody who's here, so I'm going to do this at the end, but the Minister is obviously here, and thank him for coming, and Minister Byrne is here. I see some of my fellow councillors, uh, Rebecca Moyne and Greg Kelly, Angus of Snuddick TD, John Collins TD. If I left anyone out, I apologise, but this, this is not about me, it's not about the TDs, it's not about um, councillors, it's about a community that is going to come up and be better and be proud. We're all proud to be Dubliners, we're all proud of this Inchy Core village and this I think, as I said, and I use the word for the third time, a game changer and I just hope it really goes well. It has my 100% support as, as Lord Mayor of Dublin and all I say is let's get it going sooner rather than later. Gurumag of Galair. Thank you, very, <clears throat> thank you very much, Lord Mayor. I now call on Owen Murphy, the Minister for Housing, Planning and Local Government. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you, Tony, and uh, good morning, everyone. And I want to start off by thanking the Lord Mayor for being here this, this morning and for supporting this proposal and for the vision that he is bringing to it. It's very important that the Lord Mayor's Office and the City Council um, are right behind the plans that we're talking about today. I also want to acknowledge the local representatives who are here. My colleague, Minister Catherine Byrne, is here. Angus Snedig is here, Senator, Senator Fintan Warfield is here, Eamon Ryan from the Green Party is here, Joan Collins is here, and Joan Hyde, there you are. And I know Rebecca Moynihan is here, and she's also representing uh, Jan O'Sullivan uh, on behalf of the Labour Party. I want to very much thank um, Andrew McDool for being here, the Vice President of the European Investment Bank in Luxembourg. I also want to thank Dublin City Council, and in particular Owen Keegan and Brendan Kenny, who are going to talk us through the proposals for the site that we have, as well as officials from my own department who've worked um, very hard to put in place this new vision that we have for St. Michael's. And I'm finally, Richard, uh, Richard Barracks, um, who have hosted me before when I've been here in the community. I want to thank you for hosting us again today um, and doing it so well. But most of all, I want to thank all of you um, for your patience, but also for engaging with us and for helping us to shape what we think is, as the Lord Mayor said, a game changer, not just for the community, but we think also for the country. Um, I know the proposal doesn't fit with everyone's expectations in particular the members that support us St. Pat's, but I do want to thank them as well for engaging with us. Our priority as a government is to rebuild our housing sector, but to do it in a way that regenerates communities, but also brings in new policies that can help us avoid the mistakes of the past. And the proposals for cost rental or affordable rental that we have here for St. Michael's is both of those things. People who are renting in some ways are those who are most exposed to the shortage of housing that we have at the moment, because they are paying excessive rents, as is also and impeding their ability to save money to buy a new home. And we also see how difficulties in the rental market are one of the primary drivers of people going into emergency accommodation. Now, many other cities in Europe have cost rental or affordable rental as part of the rental market. And essentially what it means is a scheme where individuals or couples and or elderly people who are retiring, anyone really in the community, can have security and certainty of their rent payments into the future. A rent payment that is less than the market rate and a rent payment that can't jump dramatically up um, depending on what's happening in the market at the time. So a rent that's affordable and a rent that's secure into the future. So we've come together uh, in the department with Dublin City Council and with the European Investment Bank and with other stakeholders here in the community to draw up proposals for a scheme that would deliver a significant number of new homes here into the community that would ensure that the majority of those homes were affordable homes. Unlike previous proposals, the majority now will be affordable homes locking in a long-term rent that's between 15 to 25 percent below the market average rent in the area, protecting people, as I said, from rents that could go dramatically up or down in the future, and also allowing people from the community to be able to rent where they grew up um, or live close to where they work and close to the city centre. But also a scheme that's not just about building houses, but that's about building homes and building a community. So new green space, new civic space, a new supermarket, a new library, all the different types of facilities that we need when we talk about building and regenerating a community. The Dublin City Council will walk us through that vision very shortly. I believe it's a great opportunity for the community here uh, to see rent regeneration of this landmark site, but also to build new homes that people can afford to rent in the future. It's very much a priority for me as the Minister for Housing, and some really, really excellent people have come together to bring forward this proposal and will now lead and deliver this project into the future. And I hope to see many other communities up and down the country benefit in a similar way. But you here in St. Michael's will be the first. So Dublin City Council um, are going to talk you through the proposals for this, this the site. We have potential designs already done. You'll see them on some of the images that are around the room. There's a background behind me that's going through what the site could look like potentially. 
Um, there's going to be a period of consultation to further enhance those proposals, and then it will go <coughs> fall to the Lord Mayor and his colleagues on the City Council uh, to agree those proposals in the very near future. And when Dublin City Council are ready to go, we'll then jointly approach the European Investment Bank for funding. And the European Investment Bank has shown a huge commitment and a huge interest in Ireland and in funding a number of different projects up and down the country. And so I want to in particular thank Andrew, the Vice President of the Bank, for being here, for Lux for being here from Luxembourg uh, to talk a bit about their role in this proposal. It is eligible for European Investment Bank funding, and as a result of that, it's going to help us drive even greater affordability on the site. So thank you very much for all that you have done to date in engaging with us. I want to thank in particular the local reps who have been, I suppose, accosting me on a weekly basis about what's happening with St. Michael's, what are we going to be able to do, can we do more affordability? The answer to that is yes, we can, and we can move to do that immediately once the Council signs off and proposes. So thank you very much for being here, and I'll hand you over now to Brendan and the other Council who's going to talk us through the plans. Thank you. Good morning. Um, the new cost rental that they model that the Minister has spoken about is very welcome. Um, not, a, not alone does it achieve a rent up to 25% of the market value, it also gives long term security of tenure and long term stability of rent levels, which is something Dublin Valley needs at the moment. Dublin City Council will also aim to make some of their apartments available as affordable mortgage, maybe up to 10% will be affordable mortgage. That's something we've worked through in the next few months. Um, the project is not just about constructing 500 new apartments. Uh, there will be green spaces, there will be play areas for the, for the children and the residents who will move into this new development. At the front of the site, there will be a state-of-the-art public library, which will be a civic centre for the Inchicore Court and Mainham area. Uh, there will be a shopping facilities, community facilities, expansion of existing sports facilities and a public plaza. This will act as a catalyst for the much needed economic development of Inchicore Village. As people know, it has deteriorated in the last few years and we need to do something about that. And the project team will place particular emphasis on this important issue. The development will bring about a thousand new residents into the area and hopefully they'll spend a fair bit of their money in the Inchicore area and that'll be good for business. We've appointed a new project manager, Ms. Sandra McAteer, who's just down there quietly in the corner. Um, for this important uh, development. We're, we're currently building an appropriate resource team around her. And no doubt she's been involved over the last few months on, uh, on this project and she will hit the ground running. We will immediately set up a commission a full design team, some work as the Minister has already done. And I hope to get that done very, very quickly. And in parallel, we want to set up a new local consultative forum. Uh, and a lot of work has already been done on that, so that should start immediately. And all this will be done with the objective of having a developer contracted, selected before the end of 2019. Now that's a tough task with all the bureaucracy that goes around these things, but that's our aim at the moment. I want to thank the local community. Uh, I've been involved in this area for a long number of years. I want to thank them and the great community activists that have done a huge amount of work here over the last few years in the force and the state was demolished. And uh, Dublin City Council, uh, we give a strong commitment that we will work tirelessly over the next few years to successfully implement this project in full and use it as a strong catalyst for the regeneration of the whole area. That is the important historical area of Inchicore and Mainham. Finally, I want to thank the Minister for the very strong support for the project uh, uh, and the local uh, TD and Minister Captain Bourne, who no doubt will keep a close eye on us as this project develops over the next few years. Also, many thanks to the officials in the Department of Environment, sorry, Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government, in particular Barry Quinlan over here has done a huge amount of, has done a lot of help work for us and he's been a great support. Also our own city councillors have been very supportive, many of them are here today, and our own staff, Tony, Hugh, McKenna and a lot of others who have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort on this. We look forward to working with all the stakeholders in the Inchicore area, we look forward to working with EIB in progressing this development as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brendan. I now call on Andrew McDowell, the Vice President of the European Investment Bank, to say thank you. Thank you, Tony, uh, Lord Mayor, Minister, uh, Deputies, Senators, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here at St. Michael's uh, on Emmet Road to join Minister Murphy and the Lord Mayor and Brendan and his team for this important public announcement on. Um, 
for the new affordable housing project. It's great to be back in Dublin 8, in fact. I was here uh, only six months ago with the president of our bank, uh, Werner Hoyer, to, uh, to sign a 500 million loan for the, uh, for the National Children's Hospital uh, project up the road, and also to, uh, to mark uh, the launch of the new Lewis uh, service, which we also uh, financed. At this point, I should emphasize this has nothing to do with the fact that I'm a Dublin 8 resident myself. Uh, from the South Circular Road, uh, well, at least until I moved to the Bright Lights of Luxembourg. But it's great that there's uh, such good projects uh, for the IB to finance in this part of Dublin. For those of you who don't know us, the European Investment Bank is the EU bank owned by the Member States of the European Union, indeed owned by you. The taxpayers of Europe were a public bank. And therefore, our mission is obviously to finance good, sustainable projects that deliver on the public policies of the European Union and its member states. And that's why we, we've already been a very active supporter of, of housing uh, policy in Ireland, having lent already, uh, actually just in the last four years, about 350 million euro to uh, approved housing bodies uh, in Ireland through the Housing Finance Agency. We're also working with the NDFA the National Development Finance Agency, on supporting the first, uh, the first ever social housing public-private partnership, not just in this country, indeed, but anywhere in Europe. Uh, and this is something we hope to be able to close, or this is at least the first bundle we hope to be able to close uh, later this year. But of course, today marks a further step in our cooperation on housing policy, and this time in the area of affordable housing. Affordable housing, as the Minister has said, addresses an important social need, um, for those obviously not qualifying for social housing but who nonetheless cannot uh, are unable to acquire uh, or rent properties of their own in the, in the private market. And of course it also helps to increase the supply of, of housing generally in line with the mix of social, affordable and private housing common in many other European countries. Indeed affordable housing uh, is often uh, up to about 20% of the, of the housing mix in many of the countries that we work in around Europe. Provision of housing for rental rather than purchase also means that affordable homes are available for future generations of tenants. I'm very pleased, therefore, that the EIB has been asked to offer our experience and support from affordable housing models uh, across Europe to the Minister and to his Department uh, of Housing, Planning and Local Government in the development of this pilot with Dublin City uh, Council. We've, we've lent uh, over four billion for, for this model of housing just in the last five years across Europe. So we, we, we have a, an awful lot of experience in the different models, the different approaches, the opportunities and indeed some of the pitfalls. Um, as a cost rental scheme, the Emerald Road project is using public land to build affordable rental housing. This helps reduce the cost of housing, while the use of an existing city site will clearly contribute to urban regeneration. The project has, uh, as we understand it, direct access to public transport while being close to parks, hospitals and excellent facilities like the, the one we are in today. Retail opportunities, which are part of the development, will also support the needs not just of obviously the new residents in uh, St. Michael's, but indeed all, all the residents of Inchicore. Major developments in the area such as <coughs> the National Children's Hospital that the EIB is helping to fund will, I believe, drive further development in this area. I'm therefore very excited that the EIB is associated with this important pilot project at Emma Road, and I look forward to the next steps uh, as, set out by, uh, as set out by Brendan. This will include putting in place a long-term funding structure where the EIB is expected, uh, and we expect, uh, to play a leading role. I also expect that this scheme will be followed by similar developments, not only in Dublin, but as the Minister has said, in other parts of the country, and the EIB is also ready to play a supportive role in the expansion of the model. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Andrew. And um, on behalf of the Chief Executive and Deputy Chief Executive of Dublin City Council, I want to thank everybody here this morning. We'd also uh, express our sincere gratitude and thanks to uh, all the team in the Richmond Barracks, this fine facility here this morning, who facilitated us. And in particular, thanks to Aideen and her team. And she's asked that um, if anybody would like to stay around, there is a cup of tea or coffee and a scone for all down in the, um, in the, in the restaurant at the back. This ends our proceedings here this morning. Uh, we thank everybody here for coming. Um, 
the Minister and the Lord Mayor will be um, going outside for um, a photo shoot or an opportunity to maybe take a question or two, if that's okay. So we'll conclude proceedings now this morning. Thanks very much, everybody.